uh, Tony Riccadello, um, and it, it didn't appear for the last couple of years due to COVID and all sorts of dramas that, uh, that the whole nation suffered with. And it's good to have it back. I believe his widow Vicky's here and son David are also here to present that later on this afternoon. So we look forward to that. And um, my understanding is they're going to do a, like a parade yep. first time past before the race gets underway on the second pass. This, this race, of course, the National Sports Dance Series, you do a out lap and an extra lap to warm up the tyres, warm up the cars and just be ready and safe for that opening opening lap and journey of track activity. It's the driest the track's been for the well, sports dance this weekend. I was going to say, it weekend. is dry. There's no wet. <laughs> That's it like, everyone's gone out, I would say, on slicks for this final race, but the problem we had before we jumped on commentary, Gary, was uh, we <laughs> felt a sprinkle. Yeah, and um, if you look out to the right of where we're looking at now, uh, going towards uh, turn six and seven, back, basically in the background of this shot, mm -hmm. there is rain coming. That's it. And as has been all weekend here at Sydney, right before the rain comes, the wind picks up massively. And right now, <laughs> the wind has picked up yet again. So. We'll get through this race, but uh, whether we see some precipitation that is enough to worry drivers on slicks, who knows? But it's sure going to be an adventure for this Des Wall Trophy race. And this is the one that, if you can't win a championship, it's probably the race you want to win alongside things like the 50K plate. It has that sort of prestige in sports and dance racing. It certainly does. And to form up and to make a this... Uh parade lap part of the dedication to the memory of Des Wall is something special and that is why they're doing this slow lap down the straight at the moment look at that just gives it a moment to be able to take and appreciate sports dance racing in this nation phenomenal cars Phenomenal drivers, space frame cars, chassis cars, and this is his slow pass lap in memory of the late Des Wall. It's very emotional, actually. It's definitely one to take a photo of and put on the wall, isn't it? It's a huge field, so many different varieties of cars. And that's really been the hallmark of sports dance racing since its inception. You can build something, you can put it together, you you know have to work with the rule book that we've been given, but there's so much variation and so much opportunity for unique creation and ingenuity. Well, they're bespoke cars, aren't they? Mm -hmm. There's no, apart from the Mark cars, which are all fairly similar, I did notice that they were doing engine changes on at least one of those Mark cars, and the beauty of the way those cars are built, the front whole front clips off them, the engine comes out, you put a new engine, put a new clip on, and they can do that between races, and we've seen that so far. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, Jake Camilleri had an incident down at Phillip Island and then they changed the engine between races and I think we've done that here today and we did see one uh, crash earlier and unfortunately got hit by Nick Smith as well so that didn't probably help its cause. That was the uh, Frank Mamarolo car. I just noticed as well in the back of shot all of the officials clapping the sports sedans coming past as well. We've got to thank every single one of the ARDC Sydney Motorsport Park officials who have been out here all weekend this weekend. It's been incredibly tough weather conditions throughout the weekend. They're a brilliant team to work alongside as we're doing the events. We love being able to chat to them all trackside and thank you to them for all of their effort. We know the sports sedan for, um, family was really thankful for being able to put on this meeting as well, as is every other competitor here. So thank you to the officials. If you'd like to become an official, make sure to check out the ARDC website. There's portals there to be able to get into get into touch with all the people that you need to talk to. Indeed, and uh, they've been tested, the officials, out this weekend. We've had uh, bad weather-wise rain, but it's been very cold. It and is. a very cold wind blowing. Yep. And when the sun comes out, you feel as though you're going to get burnt. <laughs> That's the sort of conditions we're faced with. So now they are forming up for the start of what will be the third and final race of round four of two championships this weekend. Ten laps the journey. Jordan Caruso, Andre Heimgartner at the front of it. Then it's Steve Tomasi and Brad Shields behind them, followed in turn by Ash Jarvis and Jeff Taunton. Darren Curry, Lachlan Gardner, 
Billy Chetton and Will Furcher, Steve Lacey, Ben Maddox, Lloyd Godfrey, Nick Mantikas, Fio Camburis, Phil Ryan, etc., etc. We won't get through the field. That's about how big it is as they head down to take the start. Caruso controls when they can go, and away they go. And it's pretty well line ball between the two cars going through turn one. Caruso on the inside gets the job done. Shields into third. Tomasi back to fifth behind Taunton. Lacey looks like he's got an exceptionally good start. He's in behind Tomasi. Tomasi brake lock up into turn two but gets it under control. Jarvis on the inside of Mason Kelly. What a look at that out of turn two. So head up around the back of the track for the first time. I had to take an intake of breath there for Jarvis <laughs> down the inside. He tried to show the nose to Lacey. He obviously got a brilliant start, but the road runs out down the inside there near the pit wall, and now he's dropped back, and it looks like he may well lose a position as well uh, as they come through turn five. We focus on Lacey and Tomasi up over the hill. Lacey is stalking. He wants to get through. He really wants those championship points. It's, oh, Jarvis with a no, little bit of a uh, wobble in the mid-corner. Yeah, had a hit with Lachlan Gardner. It wasn't mm. Kelly. It was Gardner in the other white Mark One car. And look at Brad Shields putting the pressure on and gets past Caruso. So it Shields leads the way. Caruso second, Heimgartner third. This is a bit of a turn up for the books. We this, didn't expect this. This is a huge moment in Australian sports sedan racing. That little Fiat built by Joe said, they've put so much work and effort into it. We've seen it over many seasons in New South Wales racing, and now it leads a national championship round outright and the Deswall Trophy race to boot. Well, he's, and now we see uh, Tomasi pull out of the slipstream behind Taunton. Lacey does the same, goes down the inside of the Mark II car, picks up another position. Lacey's doing a good job considering he's up against the national car and looking to go into second spot, quite close behind Tomasi, down at uh, turn two. Gets, not doesn't get the job done, but uh, certainly putting the pressure on. So it's Shirls in front, Caruso second, and then we go back to Heimgartner, Tomasi, Lacey and Taunton, the next three, and they're in quite close company. Wow, what a turn up. We didn't expect Shields to, like from third on the opening, couple of corners back into the lead in um, next to no time. To be leading Caruso and Heimgartner at this circuit in those cars, incredible effort. Oh, Lloyd Godfrey has stopped on the exit uh, of I, turn six. I think the wall stopped him out yeah, there. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's made the wall. It looks like he has, you're correct, but I'm hoping that he hasn't because it's horrible to see one of these cars damaged as Lacey continues to stalk Tomasi. He's got a job ahead of him if he wants to be able to pick up those New South Wales State Championship points because he's got a long way to go to get up the road. Of course, this weekend, proudly brought to you by Kumo Tyre at Sydney Motorsport Park. A precision International behind the National Sports Stand Series. Make sure to check out their respective websites for all the information. Lacey, very keen to get past Tomasi. I don't think he's got the straight line performance to match the chef powered Calibra down the straight, but no. certainly uh, in the cornering department, it's, it's the equal, if not a little bit better than the Calibra. He's, he's definitely right up there, isn't he, with him to be able to just be able to put the pressure on all the way around the back of the circuit. But as they come down the straight, the Calibra just stretches its legs. What will be interesting here is it's the first real dry running we've had at all this weekend. So. This is the first opportunity for any of them to feel how tyre pressures normalise, what they've got underneath them throughout the race and how they can actually make it all work. As it looks like Lacey's rear is he's got a problem, around, doesn't it? It's bouncing around on that left rear. He, he's got dramas. Um, whether it's broken an upright or done something along those lines, it's certainly uh, very unstable at the rear end mm. going through there. Meanwhile, uh, it's uh, Shields in front by just on a second with Caruso second and another 1.2 seconds back to Heimgartner in third. This group of cars is uh, allowed another five seconds further back. So big field of cars, lots of different cars. The first chassis car in the field, I think, would be Will Furch's Toyota, Chef-powered Toyota in ninth position at this point. There he is on screen. He comes through around the hairpin. He's got Crompton behind him, of course. We saw Crompton off in race one. He got bogged down at turn two. 
was not able to complete the race. So the whole weekend has been an effort in just getting himself back up the field. And he's up into 11th place now. Yeah, he picked up a lot of positions in race two. They're on a dry setup. They weren't going to change it. I was talking to his father, Phil, down there just between races. And he said that uh, they're going to go with it. It was going to rain. He said, we're, going, we're not going to start. So they've gone out in this. And he's now right on the back of Percher in what was originally a time attack car. There we've got uh, Scott Cameron and the Kelly, I think. Todd, uh, Mason Kelly, yeah. Todd Kelly's son, and Kelly making the move down at turn two, gets the job done. So we did see him have a moment coming onto the straight in the previous race. It cost him a lot of positions, but he certainly struck back well in this one. He's fighting like hard, isn't he, to be able to pass Cameron down there in the turn two. That's a good effort under brakes. Here's Crompton, who is working his way up behind Furcher. So you've got two very different style of cars here up against each other. Furcher in the 86, of course, LS1 powered. We've seen it win New South Wales State Championship rounds. And it looks like Crompton's going to look to the inside down in a six and make that move. He does. This is uh, effectively a TA1 car. It was built in Australia, so it's not out of America as we would normally see a TA1 car. But uh, like uh, the likes of uh, uh, Shane Bradford's car. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Mason Kelly with a huge opportunity there around Corporate Hill. Furcher saw him coming and just drifted a little bit wide. Now he's sort of stuck there. But I think Kelly's going to be able to get past Furcher with the pace that he's got. Because whether he does it on the straight is probably a different question. Indeed. Then Furcher's car, not in Furcher's hands, won the opening round. Crusoe goes back into the lead. And as oh, I... Shields back to the inside. Right. This is on. And Shields will get this spot back. In the meantime, Andre Heimgarten has done the fastest lap of a, of a race in a track that's probably not conducive to record times. He's just done a 129.7, so it's fairly quick for a cut for that type of car. And look, he's right in this battle as well. So it's now a free car race for the Deswall Trophy, the third and final race here at round four. And there's Heimgartner making a move up the inside. Has Shirl left him room? He has. And he's been managed to hold onto that spot. So now it'll be on here at <laughs> down at to the hairpin side seven. by side. They're still side by side. Heimgartner is not giving this one away. Shields isn't giving it away either, but it looks like he's having to make a massive number cor of corrections in that car. I noticed it out of turn three when Caruso was next to him and now the hairpin there as well. You can see he was grabbing a whole lot of opposite lock through the corner. Does it again at the final corner here. So I think that car setup just isn't quite there for what he needs from it. And, and Heimgartner, Heimgartner gets past. He's done the job there. So last lap for Shields was a 30.4. We had a 30.07 from Caruso. And look, he has got the he gets the job done down the straight. So car's mega when the what boost comes on and obviously has the brakes to go with it although Heimgartner will come back at him here at turn two not quite close enough and it, certainly the drive will be with the Aston out of this corner you would think on that last lap a 30.8 for the race leader 31.7 from Heimgartner 33.0 from Shields so we know Shields car's quicker than what it did on that last lap but he was in the process of being passed. In the meantime, Jordan Caruso takes full advantage and says, well, I'm not hanging around waiting for you guys. <laughs> I'm out of here. That was Caruso's moment to get his head down and run away because he knew that those two would battle behind him, and he has. So he's opened up 1.7 seconds last time across the line. Heimgartner managed to dispatch with um, Shields between three and four across the hill, and we'll have to see what he can do now to close up that gap as Crompton starts to close in on Kelly. He's got up to 10th place. Kelly is in ninth, So that is a move forward for him. And it looks like Furcher is falling into the clutches of Cameron behind as well in the back half of the top 15 here at so Sydney Motorsport Park. Just looking down the order, after Shirls, it's Tomasi, Lacey, Taunton, Gardner. Jarvis is in position eight. Kelly nine. Furcher 10th. Then it's Cameron, Chetton in 12th. Shane Woodman in 13th. We've seen him go off in the earlier race. Liam Hooper, now that it's dry, is starting to make some inroads as well, followed by Michael Robinson, Anthony Cox, Nick Mantikos, uh, Wright and Mannix the next two. Mark Duggan has just returned to the lane in the Commodore as well, so 
unfortunately for him, no further part in this race. Yeah, and Fred Assisa and Darren Curry are two others that have decided to pull out of this one, or for whatever reason, so they're back, back in the pits. We're just completed, we're on lap seven of this, or just completed lap six, on lap seven of a 10 lapper. Can Heimgartner catch the race leader? It's 3.1 seconds the difference between the pair. And at this stage, Heimgartner is about, he did a 27.3 to the first sector, 26.8 from our race leader. So effectively the race leader has just pulled a little bit of a margin and it might be just enough to see him through. What sort of speed are they doing down the straight? 261 kilometers an hour the last time through for Andre Heimgartner, the quickest of the cars in the front running order. The man moving in this little battle that we've got on screen is just behind them. It's Shane Woodman in that BMW. There it is, the Riverside Racing prepared car. He dispatched with Chetton on the last lap, opened up a couple of seconds gap on him immediately and is now charging towards these two in front. So Woodman's obviously feeling comfortable and confident inside that BMW and he'll be able to draw himself up there. Oh, Heimgartner is off the road. Where's that? That's the final corner. He's, He's facing spin. backwards at the final corner. So something has gone majorly wrong there. I think he's just had a lose by the look of it. Gets well, it back on track. We'll see if he goes to the pit lane here, but that is a uncharacteristic moment there for that driver and that car. Well, you wouldn't know there's lap traffic is something they've had to deal with. We've seen Jordan Caruso in race one have uh, difficulties with lap traffic, and maybe that's the reason we, we, we unfortunately we missed what the actual what happened there but we hopefully will uh, we might get some word on what the drama was we're looking back at some of the division three new south wales competitors at the moment that's dave aiken in the ls powered bmw uh, chassis car and he's the kumo tire supplier here's woodman making a move on scott cameron down at turn two so woodman now moves himself up one more spot and that would put him up into position um, 13. So even if you're making up spots, you've still got a long way to go. Will Such Birch. a big field to work oh, through. That's and the problem. what a good field. It's probably yeah. the strongest field of sports sedans we've seen, certainly in New South Wales, for quite a long while. When you think that some of these cars here are, are top five cars and they're running outside the top ten, it's just amazing how quick they are. And he's Furcher now under pressure from Woodman as they go through turn six. Because Furcher's car, formerly a Time Attack Toyota 86, has a LS Power unit shoehorned under the bonnet and it seems to be quite an effective weapon as far as he's concerned. It won the opening round of the New South Wales Championship with the guy who's piling the car behind him at the wheel because Will Furcher had a shoulder issue, couldn't drive it. Cameron, who was doing the National Series, wasn't racing that weekend, was here. He was given the job in the car and did the magic job of winning a race. And the chance here he might try and displace the car that he won that opening round in. How good is it to see all through the field, sports stands in close quarter combat? Just time after time, corner after corner, making moves and passing each other as now it looks like Cameron's going to look to the inside of Furcher into one. They're going to run side by side through there giving each other just enough room. Great respectful racing. Now Furcher will try to outbreak him down into two, and he does. Well, Furcher wasn't going to let him go past, <laughs> was he? But he's run wide at, uh, almost ran wide. He managed to recover it, and now will continue on in that spot. And to think that this is a battle for 12th position. <laughs> they won't give an inch, though, and the growth of them will get out of the car with big smiles on their face with two laps to go. Caruso has got a 9.3 second lead. You can see from the graphic on the side of the screen over, um, over Brad Shields at the moment. So Brad Shields with that early run. Now Cameron, speaking of runs, to the inside of Furcher. He's going to try the move at six. Locks the rear brakes up but backs it in and manages to get to the apex. Furcher was, I think, quite forgiving of him there. And yeah, gave him I enough think Furcher's seen him coming and thought, yeah. no, I'm not going to turn in here or else I'm going to cop a Commodore into the side of my car. Exactly. There's Steve Lacey in the background. Was that Billy Chetton in the background trying to make up a bit of ground? Lacey's ahead of this group, of course, at the moment in fifth position and doing a job. So 13.1 seconds a gap between first and second. And Heimgarten has just passed Lacey for position down the They're main They're on straight. the last lap. 
last lap now and Caruso leading the way by 13.1 seconds so he'll be well and truly around the back section of the circuit while these guys make their way down the front straight Cameron holding off Fercher here and it's going to be a comfortable gap for him you can see Chet just slowly closing on them probably hasn't had the pace we expected from him this weekend but here's our man he got the race lead off Brad Shields in that incredible battle in the early stages Ever since then, he's been able to open the gap, open the gap up. And now with 13 seconds in hand, he's going to bring it home to take home the Deswall Trophy. Not the first time that this car's won that race, but the first time for Jordan Caruso. And he will win the fourth round of the Precision National Formula, uh, Sports Sedan Championship. So he comes down, takes the checkered flag well and truly in advance of his rivals. And that pretty well puts a... Uh, a signing off on the championship. I don't know if anyone can beat him from that point. Brad Shirls on in Joe Sets Fiat 124 Coupe, powered by a twin rotor turbo power plant. Comes home in second spot. Third spot will go to Steve Tomasi. Second in the championship will retain that spot in the championship. Jeff Thornton in the Mark car. Then it's Andre Heimgartner who will try and pass him down the straight. Is he quite close enough to get it done? Uh, not quite, I think. Doesn't quite get there. Let's go back to this division battle. Curry continuing to chase down Atkin in that prime tyre as BMW. And you can see Crompton looking to the inside. Curry's going to look to the inside as well to try to send it, as the number plate says, on that Civic to the inside. But he's not going to quite get there as they come to the line. Great race-long battle between those pair. Cameron will lead home Furcher as well in the inter class battle I guess you could say the national versus the state competitor. The local battle. The locals though yes they've raced each other a lot and Cameron brings it home for 11th place. Crompton got up to 10th. Here comes Michael Robinson across the top of the hill. He's probably one that we might have expected to see in the thick of things yeah, a bit I think more the, across the, the weekend. Weber, the first mm. couple of races probably didn't suit him but certainly got a bit better there. Nick, Nick Mantikos in the sports and inspect mark 2 car comes across the line ahead of Liam Hooper in uh, what effectively would be 17th position. Then it's right, uh, Grant Donaldson in the Mark car, followed by Phil Ryan. 